Hi there, and welcome to this tutorial on creating a mouse tracker in Blender's game engine. In this tutorial we will have a look at creating a basic tracker, adding static and dynamic objects with our tracker to the game, creating a building grid to link our objects to, and creating a steering behavior for an object or a character to follow our tracker. In this tutorial, I've just used the game engine that comes with the latest version of Blender and a bit of Python code that I will add to the description and explain in the video as well. In this first part of the tutorial, I will show you how to set up the tracker and how to set up the necessary logic so that the tracker follows our mouse position. So first of all, we need to create a plane that our tracker can move on and obviously a tracker. I like to use cones as they have a tip to which they point and so we always know uh, exactly where the tracker points at. So in my case um, a low vertice amount is enough as we have to keep in mind that Blender is quite sensitive for high poly amounts so keep things low if possible. Now let me just color this so we always recognize our tracker. It's important to note that the tip of the tracker should be yeah, pointing at the origin. So we go into edit mode and move our tracker up so the tip yeah, points at the origin of the object. Because the origin of the object is where the information of its location will get sent to. So for the next step we can already set up the tracking device. For that purpose we need a Python code which I will provide in the description. So you can just copy that and take a look at it. The Python code tells us that we need a mouse over sensor and that we need to name our tracker tracker. So we will do that right now. Give it the name tracker in small, um, written small at the beginning. And we need to set up the logic on the tracker object itself. So give the tracker a mouse sensor with acti uh, and activate true level triggering. So it will frequently at the frequency of zero logic tick. So always check the mouse position and go to mouse over any as we want to work with any um, object our mouse is over. Then we add the Python controller and go to main, uh, go to modules and now enter the name of the Python script you saved it in. In our case it's tracker. So capital T tracker dot main. The main is the module we defined at the top here. Now we can combine those two. And the last necessary step is to name the sensor the same that it's named in the file, so which is mouse over. Now if we go into the game, you can see it works. To be able to view our cursor, we can go to the render tab of the game and activate mouse cursor. Now the tracker follows our mouse. Now as you can see, the tracker lifts itself up and goes closer to the mouse. That is because the tracker itself got recognized as an object in the game world and we defined with mouse over any that all objects in the game world will respond to this sensor. So we need to cancel out the tracker object from the physics calculation. For that purpose we will just set the physics to no collision. And now the tracker can't track itself, so to say, and replace its own position again and again. Now I will show you how to add an object to the current position of the tracker. For that purpose, we will need an object that we can add. It's important to move that object to a layer that is not our main game layer and that is not active when we are in the game, so that multiple copies of it can be created. Another important step is to move the surface to the origin of the object. In the static case, the origin needs to be on top of the object. So we will move it like this, and this way the object will, will be created at the tip of the tracker and with the surface pointing down flat at the surface that we've created here. Now we can just set up the logic to add an object. That's pretty easy. We will just get a mouse um, sensor 
with the left button on tap so we don't create more and more objects if we hold down the button and edit object add object our newly created cube now let me give that cube a color so we recognize that better on the gray surface and if we now start the engine and left click the cube gets added now you can see it floats a bit that might be due to the surface point being too far away so we can just move that up a bit and it got less so that way you can create static objects and even stack them in order to add dynamic objects we need to change our code a little bit as else the objects would right now fall through the surface the origin of a dynamic object needs to be at its middle for the right collision uh, calculation. So if it's at, it, at its middle and we add it at the bottom point of the tracker, at the tip of the tracker, it would fall through our surface or back through. So we need to move the tracker up. First of all, let me create this new object, which will be a blue color for recognition and set its collision to dynamic and collision bounds to box. Now, we need to change our code up a bit, as I've said, and in this case, we just need to add this line, um, tracker world position plus one. So the Z axis, which is defined here, will be plus one unit from the mouse position, so that anything we add kind of folds down first, and so it can't buck through our surface. Now we'll add that new cube, and let's shrink it a bit, so it really has the potential to fall. And as you can see, the tracker lifts up one unit above the mouse. And if we now add our objects, they will fall down and they are yeah, dynamically calculated so they can move and you can kind of interact with them in the engine. So it's important to move the tracker up so the objects don't fall through the ground. Now, the next thing we want to discuss is how to set up a basic building grid like seen in my other videos of um, the RTS thingy and the tower defense thingy. So for that purpose, we first of need to create a grid. The grid size can be just a plane and the plane size will be the yeah, unit size, so to say, of the grid. Now, for this purpose, we even need another um, Python code, which I've already added here, and I will also add that to the description or to a text document, which I will link in the descriptions. I don't know yet. Um, now, what has changed? We also define who's the owner of the uh, logic we just imported. And this time we don't set the tracker to the mouse position, but to the position of the object it, yeah, the mouse touches. So that way it will always, the tracker will always be of the center of this plane. Now, we need to set up the logic and then you will see what that means yourself. First of all, we again need a mouse sensor, this time not mouse over any, but only mouse over, as we only want the tracker to be pointed at this grid block once the mouse touches it. We need to give it the same name as defined in the script, which is mouse over with capital. And I don't think, yeah, let's set true level triggering just for a testing purpose. And we again need to set the Python controller, which also is the main module again. So track grid dot main. It always depends on what you name your Python files. Now let me move the tracker and test that out. Which doesn't work because the tracker is named wrong. So change that name. And now as you can see, the tracker moved to the position and exactly to its origin of this plane plus one because it's still there from the last tutorial we can delete that for now oh no let's let's keep that in for our dynamic cubes to work um so we will set up the dynamic cube thing again add object add object cube um a dynamic cube which we can color and which has the collision bounds of a box and shrink it. So now we can add that cube with the left click. 
So if it's not tracking anything, the cubes will fall down. If it's tracking this, the cubes will stack. Now, obviously this is only working for this little block. So how do we set up a grid? That's pretty simple. We can just give it an array. So go to array, set up the grid, grid size you want on the X axis and give it a new array. Set up the grid size you want on the Y axis. So give it a value of one on Y and delete the X axis. And now we have a five by five grid. Now, obviously, if we apply this, this is just one model and its origin is still here. So no matter where we touch it, the tracker will go here. How do we solve that? We need to separate the model, the, the single part of this um, to be single planes. For that purpose, we select everything and search for separate or hit P and then buy loose parts as the array has created vertices. Um, it has duplicated the plane without connecting the vertices. So now we have all these single planes. Now, if we do this, it will still go to the origin of the first cube because all the planes origins are this on this thing now. So we need to change that and go to set origin, origin to geometry, and all the planes will have their origin set to their own geometry. And if we now do this, start the game, you can see the tracker always tracks to the middle of those planes. So that way we have created a grid. And if we now add static objects like seen in the uh, first part, we can kind of create buildings like in the tower defense demo I created. So I used exactly this method. Lastly, I would like to show you how right-click tracking works, kind of like a unit that follows the point where you click to. This works with the same tracking device, so a different code right now. What has changed? We added a new sensor, a click sensor, so it doesn't always change the position of the tracker when our mouse touches something, but only if the mouse touches something and we click. To set that up, we can just again go to mouse on the tracker and keep the naming convention in mind. So we need a mouse over actuator or sorry, sensor, mouse over any again and true level triggering our Python module which is in this case track to click dot main, connect these. And we need another um, sensor, in this case, mouse left click. We'll just copy the name. And set it to left button and connect those two. So I need to change the name of the tracker again, as we've named the object with the small t. And hit, let's see if I named them right, yeah. So if we now mouse over something and left click, the tracker position will be changed. You can also hold click, so it will be changed all the time. You can change that again if you just set the click to tap. So if I'm holding right now, but nothing changes. So you can define how you like it. So now how do we make something follow this tracker when we click it? This is a pretty simple task. We just need the standard steering behavior. So create a new cube and make it dynamic. And this dynamic cube will now get the logic of following this tracker. So let's color it again. So we better see it on this uh, gray surface. Always. So it starts once we start the engine. Um, steering is here, target object our tracker. Now also activate uh, true level triggering so it will always do this and not just once. And now it will always follow the position of our tracker. So this way you can create a marker that you can reset with the left click and the object or even your character will always follow that marker. So that's it for this tutorial. I hope it was helpful to you at least a little bit. As always, if you have questions or encounter any errors, just leave me a comment, I'll try to solve it together with you. And thanks for watching!